Thank you for those two great talks. And on behalf of the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering, it's my distinct uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Le Tien Do. He got his bachelor's degree in chemistry from Peking University, uh, then came to the States for his graduate work at UCLA, followed by a postdoc at the University of California, Berkeley. He joined Purdue in 2017, and since then, I don't think he's left his office, uh, <laughs> according to his productivity. Um, he very shortly got the Office of Naval Research Young Investigator Award. Uh, he very recently got the NSF Career Award. And in between, he's grown his group to double digits. Um, he is, on, according to the Web of Science, in three years of his five years here, uh, an outstanding re uh, cited researcher, which means he has published papers that get citations of the top 1% of all papers published. I will not tell you what he does. I will leave that to, to him uh, in, his, in his time. But um, he really is um, breaking frontiers at the boundaries of material science and chemistry to make devices that will improve human life. And with that, I will pass this over to Le Tien. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John, for the wonderful introduction. And also, I would like to thank College of Engineering, and particularly Marsha and Maria for setting this event up. So really wonderful opportunities for us to share a little bit uh, more about ourselves. Just like previous speakers, I will not talk about too much technical work uh, uh, here. And I will just share a little bit more about who am I and uh, where I come from and how we get here. Okay. So John already briefly mentioned, uh, okay, let me see. So I, okay, I, I, I was born in Beijing, China in uh, 1987. I spent 22 years in Beijing. I never left the city. <laughs> so I went to Peking University, studied chemistry there. And after that, I took a long flight, arrived at uh, Los Angeles. I studied material science uh, with Professor Yang Yang there to learn organic electronics, materials, and uh, devices. And towards the end of my PhD, I had a short sabbatical <laughs> uh, type of uh, visit at UC Santa Barbara. I worked with Fred Woodo, Professor Fred Woodo a little bit, uh, about half a year learned uh, uh, organic chemistry and polymer chemistry there. And we have a uh, very exciting discovery there. Uh, I will mention that work later uh, of my talk. Um, after my PhD, I went to UC Berkeley, did my postdoc with uh, Pei Dong Yang, and learned, uh, changed the topic a little bit, learned inorganic materials and uh, nanotechnology. Right? So you can see most of my uh, scientific training is in the West Coast, in particularly in California. So I spent eight years there. And obviously, US is so big, right? So after that, I decided to definitely go to the east and, uh, and see what's going on on the east side. So, so luckily, I got this job at Purdue. Um, I took another uh, long flight, <laughs> arrived at this uh, beautiful state of Indiana, and uh, started my independent uh, group here at Purdue. So when I, I just arrived, uh, I was pretty nervous and not sure what's, what's the future. Right? But luckily, over the past five years, um, I met lots of great uh, colleagues, great mentors, and also great students and staff uh, who helped me tremendously and helped me go through this tenure process smoothly. So I have spent a few minutes just to uh, uh, mention a few names and uh, introduce them <laughs> uh, briefly. Okay, so first of all, definitely our department head, Dr. Kim, who helped me. And he's really a visionary. I'm sure you guys all know his great achievement. And he leads the department in, in a you know, very uh, good shape now. Uh, he provided us uh, endless and uh, tireless uh, support. I would say not only providing the money and the students, he really sit down with us and uh, uh, learn what we need and help us make connections to external peoples and, uh, and really shape our future. So without his support, I cannot uh, stand up here today. Another important mentor is Professor Rakesh Agovo, also a very, very famous person. And, uh, uh, but I feel he's probably the most uh, humble <laughs> and, and, and member <laughs> uh, in the US. Uh, anyway, he's always very friendly, very approachable. My office was actually <laughs> next to his office. We are in the same suite. We interact almost on a daily basis before COVID, uh, after COVID, uh, since COVID changed a little bit. But I, I learned so much from, from him and uh, um, I really uh, I enjoyed like, uh, learning, learning uh, lots of things from him. Another important mentor, uh, Brian Budurs, uh, he's not here today, but we just have a great uh, symposium uh, over the weekend. So 
we have lots of uh, common uh, research interests. We collaborate a lot. We co-advise several students and postdocs. I learned lots of polymer chemistry and the physics from him. And also, I was amazed by his uh, ability of multitasking. He has, he can handle so many things at the same time: learning, uh, teaching, research, mentoring, uh, uh, service, family. So <laughs> he did an excellent job on every aspect. So I'm still learning that. And. Uh, then uh, Professor Brett Savoy, my fellow colleague, <laughs> who is here, thank you very much for coming. Um, yeah, I was so fortunate to, to be able to collaborate with him <laughs> right from the beginning. He is so popular, many people want to collaborate with him. But I have uh, I have a privilege to, to, to be able to, to spend a, a lot of time with him. So we had a very exciting five years, multiple couple of Nature, Nature Nanotech paper published together, and some uh, joint fundings. Um, yeah, I learned a lot of things from the computational side, and your prediction is really, really accurate. So yeah, we find a lot of useful materials based on his sim uh, simulation. And uh, one thing I need to catch up is get up early. <laughs> you get up so early. So I promise this year probably I will see you in the, in the, in the gym early in the morning. <laughs> so, okay, another a few of folks uh, outside KME. So Professor Jiang Guomei, uh, also my uh, very, very good friend. We talk about everything <laughs> over lunch research, teaching, and life. Uh, uh, he gave me lots of tips and, uh, and suggestions how to, how to survive. And, uh, and uh, he also, he inspired me to doing some translational work. Right? Just uh, think a little bit uh, something that is more practically useful. Right? And also, I would like to thank uh, 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 Professor Li Bai Huang, also in chemistry. She is a hardcore physical chemist. I learned lots of quantum mechanics from her, and really uh, teach me a lot of uh, how light and matter interact and how to see the electrons move in, in the materials. Um, actual fast spectroscopy and microscopy, really cool stuff. Uh, we also have lots of collaborations and, and many joint papers together. And due to limitation of time, I won't be able to introduce each of my mentors uh, in, in detail, but I, I definitely list all their names here. Particularly, I want to highlight uh, Professor Chung Li Yuan and Jeff Greeley helped me a lot on the teaching side. I co-taught with uh, them in several courses. And also a few uh, colleagues come here, Willis is here. Um, we talk about a lot of battery and solar. We will definitely do it in the near future. Right? And also John, we talk about the bio and the solar. Definitely those are very exciting areas we can work together in the future. And because of the nature of my research is uh, kind of interdisciplinary, I interact uh, with many people outside KME and uh, across, across the co College of Engineering, uh, uh, particularly uh, lots of uh, people from uh, material science. And uh, thanks, Professor Wang, to be here. <laughs> Take uh, some of your time, uh, your very busy schedule. Um, and also folks from ECE uh, and ME, Professor Kajie Zhao is here. Thank you for coming. And uh, Ben Zhou is here. Uh, BME and the chemistry. Right. So we had lots of discussions, collaborations, and also published a lot of uh, interesting work together. Um, so you can see the Purdue really providing a, um, a very diverse and a very collaborative environment so that I can easily interact with many people across the campus and did, did some interesting work together. I really enjoy learning a um, lot of things from, from my colleagues. Also, my group, my students, I also <laughs> like to thank them. Without them, I cannot do anything <laughs> in my lab. Right? So, here's, uh, so my, here's a recent picture. We have uh, about 20 people now in the group. So my group is growing very rapidly recently. Um, so this picture was took uh, about a few weeks ago. Leo uh, was, uh, Qixuan was sick. So, so I put uh, another picture here. And he just got a poster award last weekend. So that's a picture, uh, that's an award ceremony. So congratulations. <laughs> So he deserves a bigger picture <laughs> in this slide. <laughs> also, I graduated three students uh, who left the group earlier this year. Uh, Equity joined the LAM research doing semiconductor work now in California. Oh, interestingly, all of them are in California. <laughs> so Berk uh, uh, Aiden is in Berkeley National Lab uh, doing a postdoc. He's very passion, uh, passionate about teaching and, uh, and research. So hopefully he will become a, a professor soon. Uh, Blake uh, just joined the first solar research center in, in California. He's trying to commercialize perovskite solar cells now, so I'm very happy. At least I have one student continuing working on perovskite solar cell, and hopefully he will make this happen. He's also very, uh, um, uh, he's also doing a, a big favor for me. He's trying to establish some collaboration between First Solar and me, and trying to get some industry funding uh, to the group. Um, so I'm very excited about all of their achievements and 
I'm sure they will do great in their career paths. Pass. Okay. And uh, two of my first postdoc in the group, Dr. Enzheng Shi and Yao Gao, who joined uh, almost the same time as, uh, as with me in 2017. They spent three, four years in the group, almost like a PhD. So they did a tremendous amount of work uh, in the lab. Um, they are now, uh, now both uh, professors in China. They just got a big uh, startup package. So I'm sure they will do well in, in China. OK, now a little bit uh, about uh, research, uh, what we have done over the past uh, few years. So uh, the core of our research is materials chemistry and device engineering. Um, we are developing a new type of semiconductor called organic semiconductor incorporated proscat, or OSIP. I think the short name is pretty cool. Um, so it's a hybrid uh, sem semiconductor materials, really combines advantages from both, both organic and the inorganic world. Uh, we are doing material synthesis, uh, heterostructure fabrication, uh, and did some uh, optical and electronic property characterizations, some fundamental understanding uh, on, the, on the properties, and also apply them into a variety of devices, including solar cells, uh, LEDs, uh, even transistors and thermoelectrics, trying to improve the, the performance and the stability. There's a few examples about what we do in the lab. We, we make the materials, we grow beautiful <laughs> hybrid crystals, we assemble them into uh, heterostructures and to study some fundamental uh, electronic process in, in those materials. And we also apply them into real devices, large <laughs> microscopic devices. This is a solar cell we, we fabricated. Uh, we can get almost 25% efficiency in the lab now, uh, almost approaching the single crystalline silicon. And that's why uh, uh, the many industries, uh, uh, startup companies, and even including for solar, the larger solar manufacturing are interested in ProSky solar cell now. Um, our research is mainly funded by government, uh, a little bit from uh, 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 private foundations and, and also P2SAC uh, uh, raised here. Thanks for the support at the beginning of, uh, of, of those, uh, my research uh, uh, career. Um, yeah, as I said, we are also talking with industry, uh, hopefully get more industry money uh, into the group uh, in the near future. Yeah. So what, what's new? What's, what's next? Um, so we are continue to be excited about ProSky semiconductors. We will definitely push forward on the, uh, on the frontier of this uh, materials chemistry and device uh, performance side. Um, but we are, I'm also initiating a new direction. Um, it's totally different from the ProSky semiconductor. It's about sustainable polymers. So basically we find a way to um, create a unique carbon-carbon bond, uh, elongated or weakened carbon-carbon uh, bond. Uh, so you, uh, uh, as you may know, in the textbook, we know the carbon-carbon bond usually is 1.54 Armstrong uh, in your high school or college chemistry uh, textbook. But we are able to make a unique bond. It's around 1.6 Armstrong. So this weaker bond makes the bond uh, uh, easily breakable um, so that you, you can selectively break this bond but without breaking other bonds. So you can convert the polymer back to monomer almost uh, it's a quantitative yields. Right? Um, <coughs> So using this concept, we'll be able to uh, <coughs> produce uh, chemically recyclable polymers uh, for many applications. Uh, for example, we can make crystalline polymers uh, for some membrane, uh, strong, very strong uh, filtration membranes, or we can make thermoplastic amorphous polymers for 3D printing or, or for extrusion, just for, uh, for general, for many different applications. Right? So we just got a few uh, papers uh, uh, published. This is a very new uh, research area. And also, this is also Dr. Kim's vision for the future. So if we can utilize this concept and uh, really put, convert, translate this fundamental concept into a real use, that can have huge uh, uh, societal impact. Right? So I'm also, um, I'm also very excited about this. And also I'd like to mention uh, most of this work also jointly with uh, my friend, Bryce Oi. He did lots of wonderful calculations to help us predict uh, the, the best materials that we can use. We have many thing, exciting things going on. Hopefully, we'll be able to share uh, next year. I think that's all. So finally, thanks to my, my family uh, for, for all of their support. <laughs> As John mentioned, I spent quite a bit of time in the office, so I feel a little bit guilty not spending too much time with my kids. But uh, I was able to take them to Disney World <laughs> this summer, so they, they were super excited. Uh, and this is some event last week, uh, for the Halloween event. Um, yeah, so 
So that's all about myself and uh, the, all the excitement over the past few years. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So that was a wonderful talk. Are there questions? So I have seen him out of the office at the Co-Rec. Uh, on Tuesday nights, he's, he's uh, well, the, his daughters are learning basketball, so I, yeah. <laughs> I know that. And yes, Professor Bedores. So it's, um, maybe I'm not as nimble of a mind as you, but it's, it, it seems, oh, sir. Oh. <laughs> Not, not gaining much. But um, uh, I guess my question is, it's not a non-obvious leap to me, at least, to go from hybrid perovskites to sustainable polymers. What skill sets translate over that allow you to make that leap? <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for this question. Yeah, obviously, there's a, <laughs> a gap <laughs> in between. Right? So uh, one reason I, I come back to polymers is I, uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, I spent uh, half a year in Santa Barbara. So uh, at there, I made an uh, accidental discovery and actually published in Science. It's probably a record. Uh, I, vid I got the result of the second week of <laughs> visit Santa Barbara. And eventually, this was a science paper. Uh, but we did not uh, uh, put too much attention on that after, after that paper. But that's really the key foundation for the discovery of this uh, elongated bond. But uh, I, I did not know what to do with it over the past seven eight years. So I just put it aside. But sometimes I, I went back, I think, what can we do with it? And particularly during COVID, it allows me to think a little more because uh, I have more time stay at home. And I remember that uh, uh, after, uh, after lunch, I have a walk with my wife uh, uh, near, uh, near the house. I was thinking do something new, maybe, and uh, suddenly I got this idea. And he's, she said, oh, we should do it. It's more exciting than for guy. <laughs> 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 and then I talked to Dr. Kim, and he, he, he feels the same thing. You should do it immediately. <laughs> so let's get uh, one or two students jump into this area. And uh, then I was able to convince, convince Tim. Uh, he's not here. Yeah. Who, who was doing guy work at that time? <laughs> so I asked him to stop doing the guy work and jump into the, uh, the polymer. Thing. Oh, where is he? With him? Uh, here. Yeah. Actually, he graduated from Santa Barbara. He also worked with Fred Woodall for a few months when, during his undergrad. So he was able to uh, make lots of initial discovery uh, on that. And also, <laughs> another interesting story is Xu Yi. She, because I have one student working on this, I feel not enough. I need to accelerate. Then I, I cannot find the right students with the right chemistry and polymer background immediately working on this project. And uh, my friend, Professor May, and of lend his student <laughs> to me. He, the student, Xu Yi Luo, is not, uh, not graduated, uh, and he, he also like, um, stopped his project and jumped into this project. Uh, so I'm really grateful. Yes, please. We have a couple of comments. Yeah. A couple of comments online. Oh, yeah. Hello? Yeah. OK, there we go. All right, Dr. Yi says, thanks for sharing your research journey. And Dr. Raman says, asks, the potential for recyclability by design is exciting. What are some of the challenges in implementation? Yeah, great, great point. I think there are many new exciting chemistries to take off the, the polymer recycling issue. And there are two major approaches. One is deal, deal with the existing polymers, particularly polyethylene, polypropylene, uh, polystyrene, uh, existing polymers. Uh, you need, we need to develop a new catalyst. But most of the catalysts are very, very expensive. There are a couple of uh, uh, recent work reporting ruthenium or iridium platinum catalysts. Those are super expensive, more expensive than gold or diamond. So we cannot throw in those catalysts to re recycle the dirt cheap polyethylene. Another approach, like a polymer chemist want to develop new polymers to replace existing polymers. Again, the cost is uh, a major issue. Lots of new polymers, they show the uh, the polymerizability, you can convert them back, you can recycle them, but uh, those polymers are usually, usually very uh, composed of very strange, very uh, exotic uh, um, um, components, so it's very hard to scale up. So I believe, our I, I, I try to design polymers with as simple structure as possible, not creating like a too crazy chemistry, but, but at the same time maintain the uh, uh, processability and recyclability 
So, so that's the, the challenging part. I think our chemistry is close, but uh, uh, the major challenge is the, the cost. We have to really bring down the cost to, to close to the existing polymers. I think our, this family of compounds is pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, I think it's very promising. So the next question is along the same line. When you change the chemical bond or the distance, how does it affect on the heat to break it down or to fa fabricate it back? Uh, sorry, sir, can you repeat again? So if you put the heat there, the uh -huh. heat will be required less to break it down uh, and yeah. the bond length is higher? Yes, um, this is a key part. So um, <coughs> we want to use the heat because we learn from industry the pyrolysis is the most uh, economical process. They don't want to use iridium or platinum catalyst. Um, but the heat is tricky. You want the polymer to be stable enough. You don't want them to degrade when you pour hot water on it. Uh, but you also, at the same time, you don't want it to be too strong. If it requires five, 600 degrees C, it will, uh, all the bond will break. You will get a big mass of mixtures. So by using this concept, we can control the strength of the bond, make it uh, in the right range. We think 200 to 250 is the right range. Usually, you don't need such high temperature in daily life, but it's low enough to easily depolymerize. Sure. All right, with that, if there's no other questions, we'll conclude. Let's thank Professor Doe again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was just going to uh, uh, thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, three wonderful presentations and discussions. Um, and I'd like to just remind everyone that uh, while we are done for um, the Celebrating Associate Professors event for this fall semester, uh, we are, uh, Maria and Marsha are working already on the spring um, uh, events in this series. So um, look forward to seeing you at this event again in the spring semester. Thank you. <laughs>